Selwyn here from winstrength.com. On this video, I want to talk everything grip strength related. Uh, one of my goals for 2020, among all the other goals that I seem to have, is to improve my grip strength and figure out ways of getting a better handle of things. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to take this video, take some time to address what I'll be doing uh, and what I've learned in the recent months as to how to address this issue of grip training. It's something I think everyone should kind of pay attention to. Uh, there hits a certain point in everyone's training where their grip can't keep up with the bigger muscles. Uh, just in regards to anything, obviously we have to hold on to something. Your forearm is a relatively smaller muscle when compared with the rest of your body. So a lot of the times you can deadlift more with some lifting straps than you can without lifting straps. I think that would just be the case for almost everybody. I think there's a reason uh, the World's Strongest Man competition allows them to use wrist straps because they can deadlift a hell of a lot more weight with that um, lifting aid. And these are, these are literally the strongest guys on the planet. Even they have to use lifting straps because their grip can't keep up with the amount of weights that they're able to lift if their grip wasn't a factor. So no matter how strong you are, how weak you are, grip strength is vitally important to everybody's life. It's just going to help. Not just in the gym, but outside of the gym. That grocery run that you want to do when one trip is all you really need. Uh, opening jars, doing things of that nature. A housework is a per perfect example of having great grip strength, being able to hold things for a certain amount of time. Uh, but I digress. Grip strength is very important for inside and outside of the gym. And the funny thing is with grips, it's kind of a paradox because as crucial as it is to pretty much any movement where we have weight in the hand or we're holding something, as pivotal as that is to a lot of lifts, we tend to ignore it. And I, and ironically, I don't think it's that necessary for the start of, um, for the start of anybody's training. I think if you're a novice or a beginner, even early stage intermediate, I think for the, for a long time, you don't really need to address uh, grip training specifically, just because the weights you're lifting aren't going to be heavy enough in order to push the limits of the grip that wouldn't be able to be pushed without uh, needing lifting aids. So for the most part, when you're starting off, the weights you, you're going to be using, you're going to be training with, aren't going to be taxing the grip as much as your, as your grip can handle. Just because when you're starting to learn how to deadlift, you don't really need lifting straps of 45 pound barbell. I mean, yeah, for the most part, you probably wouldn't need, you shouldn't need lifting straps for 45 pound barbell. Um, but you're going to be training with that 45 pound barbell for a while in order to drive the technique of lifting. You're going to be learning a lot of stuff where your grip musculature isn't going to be, uh, the limiting is not going to be your limiting factor to getting stronger. But we do all hit that point in training where it starts to become one of those limiting factors and it starts to become a point of weakness and it becomes that weakest point in the chain. Just because again, it's one of the smallest muscles in, in the body in relation to training and the other muscles like the entire back is working whereas you just have your forearm working for a deadlift and i only think that that's the point in time where you should consider adding extra grip training is when it becomes that limiting factor when you are unable to take hold when you're unable to maintain a grip on a heavy deadlift and it's the grip that's failing you rather than your back if you know i could have lifted that if I had a stronger grip or if you're using lifting straps and your lifting strap deadlift is far stronger than your grip, your just plain grip deadlift, then this is probably where you need to start looking at introducing some grip strength training or some grip specific training to your uh, training regimen. Just because it will, just like, just like adding core movements in is gonna help because it hits a point where you're grip and core don't get stimulated enough by the compound movements in order to drive them to keep up with those compound movements. We need to look at different ways in order to stress those muscles in order to get them stronger without having to tax the entire body. I don't want to train my grip only when I train a heavy deadlift and I don't want to rely on my deadlift training to bring up my grip because that's going to be a very fatiguing and very exhausting endeavor. And I've been making a more conscious effort in the last couple of months in order to slowly uh, adapt my grip to increased training loads and increased uh, requirements from the from training. Uh, things like relying on lifting straps less and less, adding some more, a couple more movements like farmer walks 
where they still come that movements, but become a lot more grip dependent. Uh, isometric holds with just the far more walk implements just standing there. Uh, definitely far less weight than um, at regular deadlift, but for a lot more time than I would for a typical one rep max deadlift. So that's something that, there are a couple of things that I've been doing, but with that being said, I've learned a couple more things in the recent months. I just wanna share that with you guys and implement some of these strategies in the future. So one thing I came across that I found really helpful to kind of illustrate the point of grip strength is that grip strength isn't simply just gripping something. Uh, I in mind, the guys that make a lot of those um, gripping implements and tools came up with a really cool concept of the grip cube and it's a way to look at the different aspects of grip. So I'll, I'll throw the chart up now so you can see it as I describe it. Uh, basically, there's gonna be three dimensions to grip strength. It's gonna be uh, crushing, where you're using your fingers against your palm, so like a dead, like holding onto a, a barbell. Um, and then there's gonna be pinching, which is different, where you're gonna be using your thumb with your fingers, whether that be index or for like a plate pinch. So you're gonna have the difference between crushing and then pinching. Uh, next up will be open or closed. So obviously open is a, is a fatter implement and then closed is a much smaller implement. That's why deadlift, deadlift specific barbells are generally slightly smaller in diameter than a, a squat specific or a bar, bench press specific barbell. Because that smaller diameter, it might hurt a little bit more, but it gives you the ability to grip uh, a lot get that grip locked in a lot more. That's the reason why the axle deadlift is a lot, is one of the reasons why it's a lot more difficult than a regular deadlift because that, that increased diameter of that barbell is gonna tax you in a different way. It's gonna be a lot harder to lift that because you can't get as big of a purchase on that, on the, on the grip. So that's the difference between open and closed. And then the final dimension of this is the, whether you're doing it for one rep max strength or endurance. So am I doing a, a single deadlift that's really heavy or am I doing a farmer carry where it's not as heavy but I have to hold that implement for a lot longer and the reason why we have these three dimensions of strength is that we have three aspects of every single type of grip if I'm doing a one rep max deadlift with a regular barbell that's going to be a, that's going to be crush strength with closed hand for one rep max Am I doing um, a axle deadlift for reps? That's gonna be crush grip, but open for endurance. Um, am I doing a specialized equipment where I have to pinch two plates together? And is that gonna be pinched with relatively thin plates or relatively fat plates? We can have open close and one rep max or endurance for each of those. So each of these dimensions can interplay with each other and each of those dimensions inter interpolated with each other and mixing with each other creates different, require different needs of training. Um, the one thing that can, becomes apparent is if you try to do axle deadlifts with the same amount of weight that you regular deadlift, even if you can regular deadlift that in an alternate grip without straps, it's gonna be very difficult to alternate grip an axle deadlift with the same weight. So the simple aspect of going from that to that is going to affect the amount of weight you can lift. That's how different each of these training things should be addressed because we need to address all the different types of strength in order to get a more well-rounded grip strength. Now, if you're very specific with your grip requirements, so if you're a power lifter and all you need to do is worry about that grip for the deadlift, then you just really need to worry about closed grip, a closed crushing grip for one rep max. That's your, that's your hyper specificity. You really only need to train that aspect of grip in order to get a good grip at that specific sport that you require it to be good at. Whereas if you do something like a strongman, strongman competition or strongman style training, you're gonna have to get a good grip in all aspects of grip because the demands of that sport are a lot more varied than powerlifting competition where it's just the deadlift is where the grip is paramount. Uh, the other two exercises, it's kind of a stabilizing feature there of the grip. Um, so when you look at that, now we're going to have to get more complex with how we address increasing the grip strength because we're going to have to have nine different strength aspects that we have to address. 
if we're going to train the group strength up nice and neatly. And one thing that I would recommend is to don't overdo it right away. Just because you've discovered grip training, it's, it's cool to sing out that you want to do it. Don't do it every day, all the time, forever. Don't just have mindlessly endless grip strength training workouts or just sit there all day at your desk just with one of those crushing grip things. Uh, just because we want to have a more tactical and strategic approach to improving our grip strength. And the other thing we don't want to do is have it interfere with our more important uh, compound lifts. So if I'm doing so much grip training that I can't deadlift 80% of my one rep max and my grip training is interfering with a slightly more important training of deadlifting. Um, but again, if you're entering an arm lifting competition where grip strength is paramount, then that's going to go completely out the door and you're just going to want to concentrate on grip training because that's what your sport demands. So again, look at your ultimate end goal, look at your ultimate uh, end site and your usage for this. If you do require specific grip training, then obviously you're going to have to change. You have to focus a lot more on that in this video. It's probably not going to go deep enough for you to get any value out of it. Uh, but if you're kind of playing around in general strength and conditioning, looking at different ways to help grip, grip strength in general, then maybe that you'll get some value out of this. But Again, look at how you need to, why you need to improve your grip, and that'll tell you how you need to train it. And again, at the start, it's going to take some acclimatizing too, so I wouldn't obviously jump off the deep end. You want to, you know, titrate up. Like everything else, we need to progress up to training grip strength. We can't, again, go from zero to a thousand in one day. We go zero to one to two. We've obviously followed that progression. And that's how you want to think of grip training. You need to start off slow and build up that tolerance. Again, it is one of those smaller muscles. And again, it can take a bit more of a beating, but that becomes a line where that stress is too much and we can't both train the other movements that will be helpful for us while training grip. And again, with that being said, remembering that, that grip cube from Iron Mind, we want to pick exercises and different exercises that address each of those three dimensions in that varying aspects and different combinations of one another in order to gain that grip strength. And I, I like to look at grip training as obviously as an accessory supplemental movement uh, that I'll throw in at the end of a workout or on a separate GPP strongman arm day. It's And again, it's going to be one of the last things that I train just because of that priority of my training where I don't want my grip training to interfere with my training for the rest of the body. So again, I don't want it to interfere with my ability to clean a weight, to barbell row a weight, to do anything of that nature. I, I want it to be the last thing I train so that I have the most time to recover from it before the next training occurs. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna be the deciding factor as to whether or not I'm able to deadlift a weight on, on that day. So again, following off on that, a couple of strategies that I've been personally using um, have been to obviously minimize the amount of lifting straps, lifting you do with lifting straps. Um, it's something I've made a conscious effort to not rely on lifting straps as much. Um, there are some exercises where I think it does help, uh, like if you're gonna do croc rows or you're gonna do some super heavy weights, so um, rack pulls, uh, I, would, I wouldn't be against you using lifting straps. I personally don't, I think it's a, I think for something where you're overloading muscles, um, lifting straps are gonna be good, especially for the block pulls or rack pulls where you're using weights that are heavier than you normally would for a full range deadlift rather than doing an alternating grip where you might potentially put that bicep at a slightly higher risk of tearing. I want to be very careful as to how I say that. Um, having double overhand grip with lifting straps is going to be better for you ever so to mitigate that potential slight risk of that happening as well as it'll help you maintain that symmetry between the shoulders and i just find it a bit more comfortable to pull up the lift that way um, if you want to turn shrugs into a grip movement then yeah i would also use lifting straps there but if you're shrugging from just if you're only lifting the weight up like an inch from the safety pins then maybe you can get away with not using lift straps that'll help you mitigate uh, excessive weight being used. Uh, one thing I would recommend is to not use lifting straps for farmer walks just because the the increased dynamic nature of the farmer walks and frame carries 
think anything where you're carrying moving, I would highly recommend against using lift and trust because just because of that dynamic nature of it, you want your grip to be the limiting factor because you can, just like you can deadlift a lot more than with straps than you can without straps, when we start adding in lifting straps to something like a farmer carry where the grip can't give out, now something else has to give out and that might be, that might increase your chance of injury somewhere else in the body just because we are pushing those limits, especially when it comes to farmer carries where we're using sub-maximum weights and all the time your brain gives out a lot sooner than the rest of your body does. When we don't have that weak link in the chain to give, then we're going to move up to that next level of where else can the body break down to stop this from happening. Uh, just something to keep in mind just with those movements there where uh, just be careful out there when you lift. One piece of advice I got given that I think is worth sharing. Another thing to do that I've been doing is performing my pull-ups on the larger diameter pull-up bar. My rack came with a thin diameter and a thick diameter. I've been doing a lot more pulling pull-up chin-up movements with that thick diameter and I think that's helping tr to transfer over, especially when you're training that um, thicker open, open style grip. Uh, the other thing to do along that similar vein is to either get some fat grips or wrap a towel around a regular barbell and try and do your regular accessory barbell rows with that. Obviously you're gonna have a huge drop in weight lifted, but it should help elevate those, um, elevate that grip training just a little bit. And again, little additions along the way are gonna be great. I'm not suggesting do all of these at once. I'm just saying, hey, maybe throw this in this week or for the next month and then see how that goes. Try and progress on this one path for a while, get, some, get as much as you can out of it, then swap it out or add in a, another movement along the way. Uh, another thing that I've been doing is, at the end of a workout, is to add in some hex dumbbell holds. So again, this will be dependent on the type of hex dumbbell you have. Is it metal? Is it rubber? Is it smooth? Is it rough? These are going to affect the ease and difficulty of this. Um, obviously, just stand the dumbbell upright and then grip, grip it from the top and then see how long you can hold that for. I like to do it kneeling down so when the dumbbell inevitably falls, it just falls, it doesn't have to fall all the way from a standing position and I can hold that to a failure. Uh, grip training is one of the ones where I would suggest training to failure just because it is that smaller muscle group and it's a lot, you'll f fail a lot sooner without as many repercussions as if you train a failure with a bench press. Uh, just risk benefit analysis, cost benefit analysis, I think it's worth that payoff there. Uh, another thing to do is static hangs. Uh, obviously you can start off with the easy version where you have assisted static hangs on like say assisted pull-up machine or using resistant bands to help with that. Um, I found that that helps just with the shoulder. It makes it just feel a lot nicer if you're able to hold. The longer you can hold it, the better obviously, um, but holding it for about 30 seconds every couple of days just kind of feels like it stretches out that shoulder joint. It might be, uh, might be the placebo effect, but it does feel nice just to get that uh, also, also that spinal decompression, you have to hold it for a while for your body to relax. Um, I find that after that 30th, 30th second mark, uh, when you get close to that one minute mark, the, the spine just has like a, a release almost. It, it's, it starts to relax a little bit. So I found that really helpful, obviously, uh, for the grip, but more so for the just feeling good in your back and shoulders. Um, the other thing to, to, to escalate this up in difficulty, again, try holding on to uh, wrap a towel around that thin bar or move on to a fat bar uh, style grip. Uh, the other thing to do is to put a barbell on safety pins and hang from that because that adds in uh, instability so the barbell can now roll, can just roll and you can slip off of it. So be careful with that one but that's another way to increase that difficulty a lot. Uh, just like the rolling thunder from Iron Mind where you're trying to pick something up but you can't uh, talk it against anything else. It's just going to roll no matter how no matter how much you dig under that implement It's just going to roll out of your hands because it's designed to do that um, And literally any other grip device that exists on the market you can hang from they have all things from balls to ropes uh, Just straight sleeves that are vertical you can do all sorts of different things with different hanging implements so you can think of uh, look at like rock climbers their training implements are going to be great because they have to, they, their sport relies on grip strength. So if you're going to look at some people for like open, open style training, 
they're a great resource to look for because they have some of the gnarliest scripts that I've ever seen. Uh, next thing to do with easy is to do some plate pinches. Uh, just grab two iron plates and then just see how long you can pinch them for. Add in plates, add in different ones. Metal ones are going to be harder because they're more slick. Multiple plates are going to be a bit more easier. And obviously, as the weight gets heavier, it's going to get more difficult too. So that's something to think about. If that's something to use that won't require any extra equipment, just some ingenuity. Finally, those grip crushes that everyone's dad has. Uh, something else to look at. So it's adding to that crush strength and probably endurance as well. And obviously you're gonna have those heavy captains of crunch ones where you're gonna have a lot of force to exert in order to hit that for the one rep maxes. So a lot of different options there to train. Again, with a strategy with this, don't try and do everything at once. Don't pick one of every single exercise. Look at just like we have different training blocks and different training cycles, address each of those nine dimensions on the cube in its own time and its own training cycle. Look at developing a well-rounded grip if you need it for your sports or if you just want it to uh, improve your grip strength at general levels of being able to hold on to things. So that's all things grip related that I'm aware of right now. Uh, if I've missed anything, leave it in the comments below. What have you done to help grow your grip? And has it been helpful? Has it not been helpful? Has it helped you lift heavier weights? Hopefully this helped you with your grip and get a handle on your grip training. This has been Selling from Wind Strength and remember, a better life through strength.